One of the reasons why I started this channel back in about October 2016 was to document my journey from being this person that was very unmotivated, very lazy, had no real direction in my life to someone who's now relatively productive, relatively driven, and I've managed to completely transform my life. If you knew me back then and you know me now, you'd see a completely different person. And the way that I went about that transformation, it took mainly three things. And out of all of the hundreds and hundreds of productivity, personal development strategies there are out there, these three things are the things that have moved the needle more for me than anything else. And they're things that you can replicate as well. So that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. The first thing is about accountability, meaning that if you decide to upgrade your life, if you decide to transform your life, you need to tell the people around you, your friends, your family, your network, because then you're not just relying on intrinsic motivation to get you there, but you also have an extrinsic motivation. You also have extrinsic social pressures to keep going when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling a bit down in the dumps. You kind of have to keep going because if you don't, you're gonna look like a fool to a lot of people around you. One kind of fun way that I've been gamifying accountability is that I bought this Apple Watch about a month ago and I'm competing with one of my business partners on basically who exercises the most. There's an app called Apple Fitness that measures how many calories I burn and how many calories he burns and we kind of compete every day. Whoever wins at the end of the month gets $50. So it's not too much money, but it's enough to keep you wanting to push harder and essentially gamifying fitness. And believe me, when it's like 11 p.m. at night and I can see his bar slightly ahead of mine, I'll just go out and walk the dog for 10, 20 minutes, maybe go for a quick jog, just to get my bar slightly higher than his. And it really does push you because I wouldn't be pushing myself as much if it wasn't for the fact that I've gamified this and made myself accountable to other people. And there's many different ways that you can find an accountability partner. It can be family, it can be friends. In the Transform Your Grades, we also have an accountability Slack channel where students basically say at the beginning of the week, okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 this. And I set a reminder on that Slack post to remind me in seven days to follow up. And it just puts that little bit of healthy pressure on that individual to make sure that they do complete those tasks that they said they would complete within seven days. Even starting this YouTube channel back in 2016, that was a form of me staying accountable because I wanted to kind of document this transition from being relatively lazy to relatively motivated. And I started a YouTube channel, but I mean, you could start posting on your personal Instagram reels or your YouTube shorts or Facebook stories just to kind of track your process and get that accountability bucket filled up. The second thing that helped me, again, I've been going all out with this over the last, I don't know, six months or so, are 30 day challenges. I absolutely love 30 day challenges because firstly, back in 2013, my first ever 30 day challenge was to consume two hours of educational content every single day for 30 days. And that one challenge completely changed the course of my life. I wouldn't have this YouTube channel if it wasn't for that one challenge. I wouldn't have the businesses that I have because this challenge helped me in two ways. Firstly, it helped me build a habit. So I was doing this for two hours every day and it's like, okay, if I do this for two hours every day, I complete it in 30 days. What else can I also do if I really put my mind to it and I do that thing every day to help me move the needle to where I want to be in 30 days, in 60 days, in a year? That's the first thing. The second thing is that I was consuming so much educational, inspirational content, whether it be reading autobiographies, whether it be watching YouTube videos, whether it be watching documentaries. And this, almost by osmosis, I started to think bigger. I started to work harder because I was, at least digitally, surrounding myself with the world's greatest personal development people. And so naturally, that energy rubbed off on me as well. So right now, I'm doing a run 5K every day for 30 days. And with these 30-day challenges, it's really important that is measurable. So running 5K is very measurable every day. I'm about day 15 into the challenge, so about halfway through. And this is generally where it starts to get a little bit harder, but 
The idea really is not to have a challenge that is super difficult to complete, but something that is relatively easy to complete every day for like the first seven days, 14 days. But after day 14, after day 21, it does get a little bit harder. And you should also choose something that is going to move the needle more than anything else towards the goal that you want to achieve. And for me, I'm training for a half marathon and a few other things in the next 12 months or so. And so running 5K every day for the next 30 days is the one thing right now that will move the needle more than anything else. And also I'm practicing what I preach and I'm posting on social media, on Instagram and on YouTube. YouTube very regularly to keep myself accountable. And if you do want to start a 30 day challenge, just to give you some inspiration, I've also done a write a book in 30 day challenge where I basically wrote 1000 words every day for 30 days. I've done a be vegetarian for 30 days, no junk food for 30 days, boxing every day for 30 days. So what I like about 30 day challenges is that you don't have to do what I do. You can do the thing that will move the needle more than anything else. And that might be fitness, that might be a diet, that might be learning a language, it might be about personal development, it might be a new hobby, really completely up to you. But 30 day challenges are so powerful in the 30 days of really pushing yourself is very achievable, but at the same time, you can make some massive improvements in your life. And that's also why the transform your grades in 30 days is essentially a 30 day challenge because you really can make some massive improvements in your grades in just 30 days. 30 day challenges are all about creating habits so that after 30 days, those habits are kind of integrated into your lifestyle. And Fabulous is a really good habit tracker that, as the name suggests, will help you track your habits and improve your life one step at a time. So Fabulous started off as a habit tracker, but they soon evolved into a complete self-improvement platform that I've honestly not seen in any other app. And I've reviewed probably at this stage, hundreds of personal development apps. If you go into that app, first you can start building your habits, making your own list of morning, afternoon or evening routines, or you can select one of the pre-built activities based on the challenge you want to tackle. So I've mentioned already how incredibly powerful 30 day challenges are, but maybe 30 days is a lot to bite off at the beginning. So maybe you want to warm up with a five day better sleep challenge or five day staying hydrated challenge. Fabulous allows you to start small and build your habits gradually, relieving you of the stress and the kind of overwhelm that comes with changing your routines. You can also access daily coaching for topics like staying positive, nightly coaching to help you unwind from a busy day and improving your focus, which is particularly important and later on in the video, Video, I'll explain how learning how to deep focus for long periods of time has, as cliche as this is, has changed my life. So personal daily coaching on the Fabulous app is really helpful. I really do recommend checking the Fabulous app out. You can find the link to the app in the description below. So I have, as you know, a kind of productivity, personal development YouTube channel. And at the beginning of the YouTube channel, I was like, okay, the best way to be productive is to use chunking, is to use 30 day challenges, is to read books and be inspired and that kind of thing. However, one of the biggest shifts that I've made over the last two or three years, I'd say, now I'm realizing that to be productive, you don't necessarily need to manage your time, you need to manage your energy. Because that is one of the main reasons why we are not productive, is because we just don't feel like working. But imagine if we was like an energizer bunny and we had all of this energy, of course we would be super, super productive. But then it begs the question, okay, you know you need to manage your energy, but how do you do that? So there's a few ways that everyone knows, right? So getting a good night's sleep, seven to eight hours of sleep, eating well, so making sure that you're getting vegetables, fruit, etc., in, not filling yourself up with junk food. Now, those are the things that we all know, but it's another thing actually implementing those things because those are kind of the fundamental parts of being productive. If you're getting enough sleep, if you're eating well, then you're far more likely to have energy. Therefore, you're far more likely to be more productive. But there's a couple of other more esoteric strategies that fewer people know, but that are equally, if not more powerful than the eating healthy and getting more sleep. And one of those is matching your biological prime time with the type of task that you have. So your biological prime time is basically the time of the day that you have the most energy. And throughout the day, your energy will increase and decrease. And that's completely normal, but it's really important to kind of analyze when during the day you have the most energy. So for me, it's about 7 a.m., 8, 9, 10, 11, 
until about 12 p.m. and then my energy starts to dip in time for lunch. And then after 12 p.m. my energy levels are kind of low for a few hours and then at about 5 p.m.-ish they increase again. So I know that, I know that every day my biological prime time is about three or four hours in the morning and three or four hours in the evening. So that means as soon as I wake up, I go straight to a coffee shop, I get my four hours of deep work in. I have no distractions, I have a cozy environment, I turn off notifications, I don't check emails, and I work on essentially what is called the MIT strategy, so the most important task strategy. I work on the most important task as soon as I wake up in the morning when I have the most energy. And this is as big of a productivity hack as you'll ever find on this channel, or maybe even the, the entirety of YouTube, is I can get more done in the first three or four hours of the day because it's super focused work than, in my opinion, what most people can get done in the entire day and you're not having to do anything particularly extra all you're doing is you're matching your most important task with the time of the day where you have the most energy therefore by default you're getting more done and when your energy level starts to decrease so for me it's like 12 p.m 1 2 p.m that's when i hold most of my meetings it's when i'm doing more shallow work that take less concentrated focus and maybe tasks that move the needle less meaning slightly less important tasks and those three things have for me, changed my life more than anything else I think I've ever mentioned on this channel. So if you implement those three things and you are kind of stay religious with them, then you will be significantly more productive. And if you like this video, you can also watch this video right here where I talk about some other things on how I transform my life from being lazy to motivated. And do check out this video sponsor Fabulous, link in the description below.